Who's up for some The Rise of the Golden Idol? I fucking am. Let's go. This game, I've been waiting for this game for weeks since playing the demo. So let's uh, jump in and take a look. So I have played the demo. So I'll just give you a quick overview of how the game works. And then um, we'll, we'll skip forward to after the demo so I can show you a new case and how to solve it with your brain. It's a mystery game. Game of mystery. So, okay. In this game, you will solve scenarios using murder, involving murder and other strange events. You will do this by dragging words into the correct slots. Solve this example puzzle. Police needed to gather something to prove that the death had been a something. So it's going to be evidence that the death had been a murder. And there we go. That's how you play the game. So basically, you have these scenes of murders and other tragic events and then you you basically just click on things in the scene so you click on this guy and then you see his name is Morg Bracca so then you can go to names and then you know his name is Morg Bracca and then you have to by doing that you have to solve the murder but I've done all these like the first five or six have been done because I played the demo. So I'm going to skip ahead and um, I'll see you again when we find a new riddle to solve. So see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back to the end of the demo. So now we have a brand new case that we haven't seen before. Well, that I haven't seen before. You haven't seen any of them, presumably. Um, so let's take a look at how we do this. Behind bars, an alarming incident at Sternwall Prison. Press anywhere to continue. So, um, it looks like the prisoners have escaped. The alarm's are going off. The guards are yelling. So let's take a look at what the guards have to say. Not that one, you muppet. Start at the end of the hall. I want these cells turned over methodically. Okay, he's part of the Mamusium Pile Club. I don't know what that means. And he has a gum. So this is kind of weird. He says you mup here, which is English slang. But he has a gun, which uh, you wouldn't if you were English prison guard. I don't think an American prison guard would have a gun either. To be honest. Actually, I don't know what year this is, so who knows. Yes, Mr. Kendall. Sorry, Mr. Smith told me to begin with number 28, but you're the boss. All right, so we know he's Kendall. Mr. Kendall. Okay, what else does he have? He has a gum and a book. Dearest Julia, I'm enjoying my new job tremendously. It's been so rewarding helping the men better themselves. In particular... I've been helping one immature nurture, uh, sorry, inmate nurture his talent for abstract art. One of his early sculptures is called the very fabric of the universe using nothing but paper. Quite the virtuoso, A. I like to think I played my part as I was able to find everything he needed at my local craft shop. More recently, the same inmate explained to me his need to precisely prune one of his sculptures to capture the fragility of the human spirit. What a visionary. Once again, I managed to find just the tool he needed. So this guy's been giving, helped them to escape, basically unwittingly. Unfortunately, my superiors do not seem to see that men like him are just misunderstood, especially our commanding officer, Patrick. He treats them and us terribly. Yours forever, Percy. Okay, so we know no, this is Percy, because he's written a letter, but not sent to him. You know, this is Patrick Kendall, because he's the boss. So we've learned a little bit there. All right, and then we have a paper here. TV guide. Pale. That word again. Pale highlights. Oh, that's a game. Maybe it's a game. Love, lust, and a laundromat. Okay. What's in here? Oh, okay, a secret compartment. Marked, pack of marks playing cards. Oh, these are not... Uh, so it's not an escape. These are secret compartments. Okay, 
us up here. I don't know if that's significant. Pouch of tobacco, okay. Barred window. What's in this? Sheets. And while working in the laundry room, I heard that Kempton is organizing another po poker game. Buy-in is one full tobacco pouch to do. Find out how he always wins, no matter what he's betting on. Could be useful as leverage. Overheard Sainsbury delivering something next door. Can he be bought to update? Surely it wasn't a hack, or was it? It sounded like it the past few nights from what I've been able to hear over that blasted soap opera. Oh, he's got a blanket over the window, so maybe he has been soaring. But there's no soar in here, so maybe not. Maybe it's his arts and crafts, who knows. All right, what's this guy got in his little area? Oh, he, this is the arts and crafts guy. Abstract sculpture, abstract sculpture, clay, scissors, glue, okay. Awareness, splitting space, end of soul. I can hear you, naughty, naughty. All right. Here we go. My dear friend, you may not have heard the sad news that our mutual hero, the artist Alfred Beasley, passed away. I hope the prison officers will allow you to find this, hang this poster inside your cell. May we continue to find meaning in his drawings for many years to come. I know you will grieve for Alfred, as will I. As a spiritual man, I believe the key to escaping our torment lies in remembering the date of our loved one's death and celebrating his life passing each year. Whatever comes from this, we must voice aloud our deepest feelings without fear or shame. Your friend, Stephen Aria. So this is uh, S Alfred Bees. Oh no, Alfred Bees is the artist. So we don't have a name, we just have my dearest friend. Oh my gosh. Secret message was encoded with... Uh, oh, I'm no good at these. 281973, maybe. Is that, in, is that the right number? 281973, that's gonna be it. 2819... Seven, three. Two, eight, one, nine, seven, three. That's not enough lines. I'm no good at this. Two eight one nine seven three. Why have we got all these words here? What do these mean? Clues later. I don't get that. I don't get that. Oh, wait, hold up. So I can hear you, naughty, naughty. That someone has given him that message because look, he uses a black pencil. This is in blue. So someone's heard him doing something, which I don't really get. Cartoon fun with Alfred Beasley. Oh, wait, hold up. So, two is worm. Oh, the colors match. So, inside a box, hide. That's not an option. Disguise. Two, 
two, eight. Eight is just a normal dude. One is a little, is a book. Something about a book. Book. Nine is TV. Watch TV. Oh no, wait, I'm not looking there, I'm looking there. Spine, book spine. Okay. Seven, three. Seven is equals. And then three, blue, saw. Okay, let's take a look at two, eight again. Two is, what is that? What is this thing in the box? Uh, I'm not sure, all right, let's look at eight. Eight is orange, that's a flower. Flower book spine. Cut. Okay, it's not cut. Disguise, no. Inside, there we go. Inside flower book spine equals saw. Okay. So there was a there was a key to decipher that. That's why I couldn't figure it out. So flower book. Flowers for inner growth donated by the Harmony Foundation. Oh, okay. Those guys were in the demo, so they popped up again. Okay, so we solved that. Oh, cells, cells, cells. Pakenham, Utley, Bezik, Blythe. No gambling, no tobacco, no cell decorations. Henry, it's absurd that cell numbers run from left to right in some hallways and right to left in others. When you install the new signs above the doors, please pick a direction and stick to it. All right. So we can figure out who's who, but not easily because they might be backwards. Three, one, two, three, four, five. So these are the last three. I think that's all we've got up here. So let's take a look downstairs or oh, outside. All right. So there's a that's Mark. It's over there. Clean cuts these, just the pliers and some wire cutters should be enough to fix it. Even this tiny toolkit should have those. Okay, so visitor pass, Henry Wakefield, we've got a name, that's good. Henry Wakefield. A spool of wire, property of Sternwall Prison. The man is holding a pair of pliers. So that's, you can see them, the, oh, this guy's escaped. You can see, I don't know if you can make it out on YouTube, but he's cut away the bars and he's slid down the, here. There's a saw blade in the drain pipe. All right, so I just, I wanna, this is gonna be hard to find all their names. This might take a while. Jeremy's got a honker. <laughs> okay. Jeremy. So this must be Jeremy then. Because he's got a big nose. Not so tough now, eh? Utley, you big girl's brows. An assault rifle and a handgun. So he is Jeremy. Because he's got a big nose. A honker, as they say. There's a dog called Clovis. Do we have to name the dog? We do not. What can we see in here? Okay, we can see into the guard's office. Clearly, I can't trust 
cells. Clearly, I can't trust any of you two idiots to guard the whole block by yourselves after 9 p.m. From, Friday, from today, we will all be working the graveyard shift every night and get your bloody ears tested. How you didn't hear anything is beyond me. So pale is like rugby, I guess. Jason, Robert, Jimmy, Arthur, and Daniel. So cells. So we know he's in the middle one. We don't know who else is where. Because we first of all we don't know who's who. And secondly, we don't know what order the cells were in. So let's take a look over here. Try calling me that with a without a gun in your hand. Screw. See what happens. So that's Utley. What do you look like? That's Utley. How dare he not inform me of his plans? That idiot's duck is ungrave. When I'm out, when I get out, I'll put him six feet under. Okay, oh, he had something. What was it? A double headed coin. Okay. Heh, big girl's blouse. Looks like you've got a new nickname, a neighbor. So we know these two are together, or in cells together. Just one more year and that'll be me, free as a bird. The torment is nearly over. I trust this will help you to figure out whatever you think you heard. As extra insurance, I have a small request. I need you to get something from your work. We'll discuss it during the next exercise hour. So he helps the escape. So we've got to figure out everyone's name and what cell they were in. So we know that two of them were neighbors. And this one had pictures, right? So he's, this guy's Jason. And then that guy's got to be Daniel. So he's got to be Daniel Utley. And then the rest of them, I've got no idea. Okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> this is going to make for a great video, isn't it? Court board. Okay, that's not going to help us here. Okay, so we've got, we can, we've got all the words we need. So we've got the guy's name, but we don't know. Huh. Go in the end of the yard via a drain pipe, reach the fence using wire cutters. Finally, he climbed the climbed over the wall by attaching through a window using a saw blade he got from the person who wrote the letter who of course who was Stephen Aria Stephen Aria, Stephen Aria. Where did he get the wire cutters from? Did he get it from the cop?
Rune, one of his sculptures, catch the virginity. So I'm guessing he got it from this guy, Percy. Percy what though? That's Percy's his first name. Percy. Unless he got it from this guy. Get me something from your work. So kind of hard to say where who he got it from. I think he probably got it from Percy though. Because he was saying it's something to prune his sculpture. That sounds like wire cutters. So let's put Percy here. I don't know Percy's last name. Let's go back to the office. Nothing. Mr. Smith told me to begin with number 28. Okay, so. We can use that to figure out the cell numbers. And Mr. Smith must be this guy. It must be Jeremy Smith because there's only three guards. So this has got to be Jeremy Smith. Okay. Not that when you Muppets start at the end of the hall. I want those cells turned over methodically. Yes, Mr. Kendall, sorry, Mr. Smith told me to be in number 28, but you're the boss. And then, where's the list here? This one? No. This one, 28. Oh, this has got their names. Okay. So this is where their surnames come from. It's absurd that the cell numbers run from left to right in some ways and right to left in others. So how do we know which one this is? That's the question. Doesn't tell us anywhere. Begin with number 28, but 28 is the middle one anyway, and that's the, the mysterious anonymous dude. Oh wait, no, so he's the one who escaped, so he's the one we don't know. So some run left to right, some run right to left, but we don't know which is which because there's no numbers above them. Overheard Sainsbury delivering something next door. Kempton is organizing another poker game. Oh, so Kempton has to be in the middle one because he's got the rigged, he's got the rigged, whatchamacallit. So no, Kempton's in the middle cell. But who's Kempton? Who's Kempton? Okay, um, let's see if we can get any more. I'm trying to get the names. Let's have another look in here. So the fat one, I should be able to get the fat one. But 
that must be the guy who ran, who escaped, because he doesn't look like any of the people here. I think Robert is the guy who escaped. Because he is there's there is a fat guy, but he has he looks completely different. So I'm gonna go with Robert is the one who escaped. Robert something. Now we can you we can cheat a little bit. So he was in prison for murder. Oh no, we can't because um We can't cheat because there's too many variables. We don't know Percy's last name either. So this is a start again. Okay. So this doesn't help us at all. We know there's five cells. That's it. We don't know which is which. All right. Down here we've got some just some sculptures. This is all. Largely irrelevant to our investigation. On the desk, we have some pictures and a letter, which we've decoded already. That's the key to the code. That's the, where the saw was hidden. So that room's basically solved. So 26 Pakenham or Blythe. So, hang on a second. Utley, Pakenham, and Mystery Guy. Wait a minute. So we know this is 28. He's pointing him that way. So I guess he's pointing that way. So I'm guessing that 26, these ones go left, uh, right to left. So that's cell 28 here. They should be numbered. Kempton is organizing another poker game. Buy-in is one for tobacco pouch. Sainsbury delivering something next door. Do we have all the guards' names? Could be Percy Sainsbury. It's got to be Percy Sainsbury because we've got all the... Hang on. Yeah, it's got to be Percy Sainsbury because we've got all of the prisoners' names. So, this guy's got to be Percy Sainsbury. Don't want to move that. It's Percy Sainsbury. Okay, figuring out the cells is going to be. How do we do this? Look like you've got a new nickname, a neighbor. So we know these two are s together, but that doesn't really help us that much. Oh, we know he's Utley though. So hold up. Utley's in 27. 
So I think Utley. I think these cell numbers are backwards because they wouldn't have said it if they went backwards. So at least here. So this guy's either here or here. Okay. Let's look at what they're in for. So this guy's in for racketeering. They're all in for murder except for this guy who's in for racketeering. So I think this guy must be the guy with the fake cards. So this guy's in the middle cell. No, this guy's in the middle cell. Shit. Okay. Let me. Oh wait, no, he's Utley. So then he must be here, and then he must be here. Hey, we got it. Hey, <laughs> nice. We made a breakthrough. All right, so we know who's in what cell. How does that help us? Oh, then we can figure out the way around the cells go. Because he's not in the middle. Okay, so this does help us. This does help us a little bit incrementally. All uh, right, I want you to close, I want you over here. So Pakenham, he's Pakenham, he's Utley. He, we don't know him, he's Bezik and he's Blythe. So, let's get the name, let's get the words up. 26, Pakenham. Pakenham. We know Utley already, and we don't know number 28. Then we know Bezik. And we know Blythe escaped. Robert Blythe. Percy Sainsbury. Now, who did he get the sheets from? Oh, he said he wanted something from his work, right? Who was that? That was Bezik, wasn't it? Kempton is organizing another poker game. So he's Kempton. Jason Kempton. Okay, this is coming together right now. It's coming together. Where's Kempton? Where are you? There you go. Okay, just Pakenham and Bezik, their first names. So we can use trial and error. There, should, uh, there must be a way not to use trial and error, but with only two variables, it's quicker just to use trial and error, to be honest with you. So we've got Jimmy and Arthur. Who's who? Let's guess. Jimmy and Arthur. Arthur and G Jimmy. Oh, shit. Oh, what's his surname again? Fuck. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, wait. I can just look. Here. Packenham. Jimmy Packenham. There must be a better way to do this, but I couldn't find it, so... Oh, that's not right. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Henry. Who's Henry? Henry Wakefield. He's the that guy. Okay. Uh, 
Let's go back to the names. Oh, Jimmy could be the escapee. Oh no, Robert's the escapee. Robert Blythe. So who was the guy with the note about something from your work? So it's this guy, so that's Bezik. She got from Bezik. Jimmy Bezik, Arthur Bezik, Daniel Bezik. Um, how are we gonna do this? I must have seen the name, so I've got all the words. Jason, Robert, Jimmy, Arthur, Daniel. It's gotta be one of these. Jason, Robert, Jason, Robert, Jimmy, Arthur, Daniel. What are we do? What are we? What are we? What's going on here then? So I've basically got it, except this last two names are confusing me. It's got to be Jimmy and Arthur. So this is correct. So that means all their surnames must be correct because I got it from here. So this is that all of this is correct. It's just their first names I can't find. Let's read everything one more time. It's a letter from Stephen Aria. Kempton. Sainsbury. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I guess <laughs> just trial and error every every name with Bezik. Kendall Bezik, Smith Bezik, Julia Bezik, Patrick Bezik, Percy Bezik, Kempton Bezik, Sainsbury Bezik, Alfred Bezik. This is not how you're supposed to play the game at all, but I'm like totally stumped. I'm sure I've got everything correct except for this. Bezik Bezik, Blythe Bezik, Henry Bezik, Wakefield Bezik, Jeremy Bezik, Jason Bezik, Robert Bezik, Jimmy Bezik, Arthur Bezik, and Daniel Bezik. Okay, so.
Is this sheets? It looks like sheets to me. But are the sheets polka dot? Let's take a look. Yes, the sheets are polka dots. Okay. So it's definitely sheets. Was Robert Blythe in prison for murder? Yep. Using a saw blade, he got from Stephen Aria into the fight, which he, with wire cutters he got from Pacey Sainsbury. Did he get the wire cutters from Pacey Sainsbury? He must do, because I say it says only two wrong when, and these are both. What if I put in a different last name? Let's say Julia, Daniel Julia. Oh, so there's a third one that's wrong. Gotcha. So this is Bezik. And that is Jimmy or Arthur Bezik. So one of what these things is wrong. But only one. Huh. I think it's Arthur Bezik. I don't know why I've got a feeling. So Robert Blythe. Is it Robert Blythe or was it Robert Bl Beasley? Could have been Beasley. Beasley, where's Beasley? Okay, so it is Blythe, okay. Who's in prison for homicide? No. Definitely murder. And it's definitely Robert, right? Oh, that's what's wrong. It's not Robert. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Maybe one of these is a Robert then. Maybe the fat one is Robert. And this is either Arthur or Jimmy. Oh, he's grown sideburns. I thought because he had different hair and facial hair, he was a different dude. So this is Arthur Blythe. And so this is Jimmy Bezik. There we go. That's the, that was the problem. I got confused by the picture having being different from the guy's face. There we go. So we solved the murder. That's what it looks like to solve a murder in this game. It's like super fun. Probably didn't <laughs> seem like it from your perspective. But I really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, I'll be playing the rest of this in my, in my own time. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed my little first impressions. That was, um, must have been really annoying for anyone who knew the answer. <laughs> um, but sorry about that. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. See ya.